Hello, welcome to Anu's classroom. We are continuing with MMPC 10, that is Managerial Economics before the exam which is coming in uh, June 2023. Alright, so in this video, last video we had discussed on Unit 1 uh, and its important questions. This video we will be discussing on the important questions of Unit 2. Now, Unit 2 is a unit where, from where a lot of questions have been asked in the past. I could find around uh, a handful of questions, like more than five questions in uh, spread across various years we I have found. So, I will be discussing around five questions from past previous uh, question papers, how to write its answers along with explaining the important concepts in unit 2 in this video. So, this is a very important video. I recommend definitely to stick at least till the end. So, let's get started. In this video, we will be talking about the objectives of a firm. So, let us uh, ask ourselves, what exactly is a firm? What do you call a firm? Or when do you call an organization as a firm? When it produces some output, right? Either it be goods or products or services, whatever it is. When an organization produces a good or a service that, it, that will be kept for sale, we generally talk of it as being a firm. So, what exactly happens in a firm? It takes in some inputs, right? Raw materials, maybe or even human talent in the case of an IT industry or a service industry like a salon or something like that, human skills and they turn it into output. Maybe it is a good or a service, maybe pen, pencil, bakery items or even a software product or a hardware product or a hair cutting or a facial, whatever it is. So, it produces, it turns those inputs into some useful outputs which can be sold to get some profit or an income. Okay. So, that is what a firm is. Now, uh, what are the various kinds of firms that you can think of? Uh, we can classify firms into multiple ways, right? Think of it. Based on its size, you can talk of them as being small, medium or large. Based on the kind of raw material or the kind of output it produces, it could be primary. Like for example, agriculture, that is a primary uh, activity, right? Uh, uh, then comes the secondary activity and then definitely tertiary. Think for example, you talk about cotton. So, the cotton farmers, the cotton cultivators, the, the people who turn, the firms that turn, that take cotton as a plant and turn it into, let's say, thread. That would be considered as a primary industry. Now, that thread is taken from those people, from the cotton uh, thread industry, from those primary industries and used as a raw material to another industry which actually produces cotton clothes, right? Rolls of fabrics. That will be a secondary industry. And those rolls of fabric will be taken from them as input to say apparel industry, apparel creating firms, maybe Zara or H&M, wherever, it, whatever it is. And they will convert that cloth into dresses or shirts, t-shirts, saris, whatever. So that is a tertiary industry. You, so you get the concept, right? Easy. We have all learned about this in our 10th or 9th in social science, right? The same thing. Now coming to the sector in which it operates, private sector, public sector, joint sector, if it is for profit or it is non-profit, uh, based on the ownership, it could be one person or a single ownership, sole proprietorship, we say, partnership, corporations, professional societies like libraries, universities, hospitals, such things, right? So, these are the various ways in which we can classify a firm. So, not a big deal, right? But there have been questions in the past just for this particular concept. So, the question read like this. Uh, it was asked in the December 2021 uh, exam. Discuss the classification of firms into different categories and also discuss the interdependence of consumers and firms giving examples. So, the interdependence of consumers and firms. So, here we have on our right hand side firms and on left hand side we have consumers. How do consumers and firms interact with each other? Firms, they produce something and they are, those products or those goods and services are kept in the product market. And from the product market, those goods and services will reach the consumers. Now, the consumers in return for those goods or services will give them money, right? Will be giving money in, uh, or will give money as or expense into the product market. And that expense of the consumer is what becomes the revenue for the firms, right? Now, from where... Definitely firms to produce these goods and service will need input. Those inputs are also called as factors of production or raw materials. From where do these firms get this factor? They get it from the factor market. And in return for obtaining those factors of production, 
from the factor market the firms will give payment so let's uh, considering the example of our apparel industry itself let's say the cotton right the cotton uh, the plant the cotton from where do they get from farmers who are those farmers those farmers are people who also make up the consumer market right so it is from this consumers that these their economic resources come into this factor market which in turn are used by the firms as factors of production so it is from this factor payment from the firms okay which is done by the firms into the factor market where the consumers get their income in order to spend it in the product market so that is what uh, is expected of you when uh, it is asked to talk about the interdependence of consumers and firms now coming to the major chunk or the major topic in our video today what exactly is the objective of a firm this is also one of the questions which got asked in uh, the previous years question papers so what exactly is the objective of a firm there are many objectives of a firm most important being profit maximization we all know profit maximization if it is a profit for profit organization then definitely it is standing to make profit and not just profit but when you're making profit we actually want aim at maximizing our profit similarly just profit is not enough we need also to have wealth so another objective of firms is wealth maximization for itself and its shareholders correct and some of the other objectives of firm would be say maximizing the sales revenue or the growth rate of the firm avoiding risks and such things okay so those are the objectives of a firm if a question is asked you may start by writing what exactly is a firm you can write a short para on the interdependence of consumers and firms and then you can talk about these objectives so how is profit maximization an objective of the firm this also was an important question it came it is one of the previous years questions so what exactly is profit maximization when such a question comes again you can write the whole history of what a firm is the interdependence what are the objectives all of them in brief and then let us explain more about how profit maximization is a important objective of the firm so what happens exactly under profit maximization the firm is aiming to maximize its profit in order to maximize its profit it has to judiciously use its resources so that most of the resources or if not all is involved in those activities that maximize the production any other projects or any other products which use the same input will be cut out correct so under profit maximization firms will attempt to adopt only those investment projects which will yield them larger profits and they will drop all the other unprofitable activities like for example if say and um let's say um, let's take the example of the clothing industry itself okay now we are makers let's say we are starting a new business we are going to produce clothes and our target market is women and the area we, where we sell in so we will be specializing in our cotton clothes okay so what are the different types of cotton clothes there are uh, there could be kurtis okay if you are specializing in women's then definitely kurtis Uh, churidar materials right uh, and maybe say sarees okay and if your shop is set up in an area where most women go for work then you will find that the most sales happens for kurtis okay and the least may be for your dress materials because nobody is interested in taking a risk of buying a cloth giving it to the tailor and you know they will definitely if you ask them to uh what you can say stitch uh, say a pattern a definitely when you get it it will be pattern b they will stitch as per their wish no matter what you say correct i i think uh, obviously my girl friends will agree okay so what you will do if your roll of cloth is limited right your input is limited so definitely rather than cutting it out and keeping them as uh, maybe even shirts or um materials you will try to maximize the production of kurtis because that is where your maximum sales are so that is a sim that is exactly the same thing when it comes to profit maximization you will cut short on all the other things and finally you might find yourself transforming into a kurti store so what are the plus points of uh, following this profit maximization objectives definitely economic survival we are here to survive we are here to get income correct so economic survival it acts as a measurement standard of how much profit did you make so this year compared to last year it acts as a measurement standard 
and it also provides you with social and economic welfare. But on the negative side, when you talk about profit, what exactly is your definition of profit? Is it just making money? Uh, or what is the threshold that you are setting to call yourself profitable? All those kinds of various, various definitions will come in. Are you considering net profit? Are you considering gross profit? Are you considering operating profits? What it is? So what exactly is profit for you? That is ambiguous. What is profit for you may not be what is profit for somebody else. So how do you measure? It ignores the time value of money. As we all know, a rupee today is worth much less tomorrow than it is today, right? Or yesterday's rupee is not as worth today. So it ignores the time value of money because all you are seeing is whether your 100 rupees yesterday became 200 rupees on a future date. It is not considering the time value of the money. There is no attention paid to the risk and the quality gets ignored, which um, many businesses uh, soon find becomes their pitfall. So that is how profit maximization is an objective of the firm. So you can write all the story uh, in order to get marks. Next is how to differentiate between accounting and economic profits and that too with the help of an example. For just this question alone or for this accounting and economic profit uh, question alone, I have found two questions in the previous years. Uh, one of them uh, read like this, that is differentiate between account, uh, accounting and economic profits with the help of an example. And on the similar lines, the assignment of 2023, which you guys might have written, also had a question. Uh, uh, with respect to accounting and economic profits, the question was, the definition of cost is quite different for economists than for an accountant. And it is asking us to discuss it with the help of an income statement, which calculates both the accounting as well as economic profits. Okay, so how do we tackle such a question? So let us start by talking about what exactly do we understand by economic profit and what is, what is it that we understand by ac accounting profit. So for an economist, profit is economic profit while for an accountant being a finance person he is more concerned about the accounting profit because it is for him it is just those accounting revenues right so economic profit is that form of profit which is derived from producing goods and services while factoring in alternate uses of a company's resources so this is this term alternate uses of a company's resources that is the key differentiator here, okay? So when you talk about economic profit, we are not just talking about what, how much revenue you got and how much cost was involved in getting that revenue. You're not just talking about that, but you are also talking about something called as the opportunity cost or that implicit cost. And that is how we decide on the economic profit. Like, and uh, I think most of us, especially Indians, um, and uh, if not us, then at least our parents, you might have always... You know, they always think from that economist point of view. I uh, And that comes evident when they say, Are, I should have not gone to this shop. I should have gone to that shop. It was nearby and it was also having that sale. Then what did I gain from this whole trip, right? Such talks are most common in all our Indian households. That is economic profit, what they are talking, right? Like, for example, you might buy from a higher, uh, from a store that is nearby your shop which is sells goods for a slightly higher price than travel maybe 20 or 30 kilometers uh, uh, to buy from a shop that has a marginally lesser price, right? The, the reason why that, that comparison happens, that doesn't happen just on the amount part. If it was an accountant, they would have only talked or looked at the price of the product. Okay, uh, say Apple 1 kg, I will get it uh, from Big Bazaar at let's say 90 rupees. But the big bazaar is 50 kilometers from my home, whereas my uh, my nearby shop, Dukanwala, he will uh, he will charge me 99 rupees, but I don't have to travel. He's just down my flat only. I can just go there and buy. Okay. So what will we do? From an accounting perspective, you will go to big bazaar, which is 50 kilometers away. But from an economist perspective, you will forsake that uh, 9 rupees. Okay and go and buy from your nearby local store. Why? Because to travel 50 kilometers, you will have to in also include traveling cost, right? So even an accountant also looks at the traveling cost, but suppose say you have to visit a relative, okay? You have to visit a relative uh, 50 kilometers away and their house is next to the big bazaar. Then definitely if you want to buy the apple, you will buy from big bazaar, correct? 
So the traveling cost was there, but what changed, right? So all those things, that kind of a thought comes in from the economic profit point of view. Whereas for the accounting profit, the profit is earned after various costs and expenses are subtracted from the total revenue or the total sales as per your GAPP, sorry, GAAP gap principles, correct? So that is what economic profit is and accounting profit is. So when you have to differentiate between them, the same, just this one line you can write in multiple various ways and do that differentiation this is a basic differentiation so coming to the example part i want to introduce to you a new company okay disclaimer it is a purely fictitious company just created so that i can explain to you the concepts easily okay and we'll be calling that company as satwick suites so let us consider the finances of this business that we are going to call as satwick suites okay in order to understand economic profits and accounting profits a little bit better so, Satvik Suites, let's say it made a revenue of 10 lakh rupees during the financial year 2022 to 23. Okay. And in that 2022 to 23 period, the company had spent 1 lakh rupees for acquiring the raw materials for producing its suites. 3 lakhs was spent on salary to its employees, 2 lakhs as rent and 50,000 on equipment. And the owner of the Satvik Suites, let's assume that he was a techie who got bored, he or she was a techie who got bored um, and left their MNC job to start a business and have a life of their own, right? <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so let us assume that person while they were working, before Satwik Seeds, they were working in some organization. He was uh, he or she was a salaried employee of some other organization and they used to earn around, let's say, 6 lakh rupees per year while working for that company. And they left the job and now they have started Satwik Seeds. So was Satwik Seeds a mistake or not? Okay, so to consider, to know that answer, we have to try and calculate profits on two ways. So first, let us talk about the accounting profit. If you talk about the revenue, you got 10 lakh rupees. Expenses, this is the implicit, uh, explicit expenses. Okay, raw material 1 lakh, labor 3 lakh, rent 2 lakh, equipment 50,000. So total expenses came to be around 6 lakh 50,000 rupees. So though you got 10 lakh rupees, you had to spend 6 lakh 50,000 rupees. So in effect, your profit pre-tax would be 3,50,000 rupees and with this profit you will not be having to give any tax either, right? Yeah, you might have to give professional tax because there is labor involved. Okay, so profit pre-tax 3,50,000. Now coming to checking the economic profit which is what if I was an owner or if you were an owner would most probably check is the economic profit aspect of it. Yes, I got a revenue of 10 lakh rupees. My business did give a uh, get me a revenue of 10 lakh rupees. But to get that revenue, I had to spend in 6 lakh 50,000 rupees. Whereas, if I had not done these things and I had stayed in my, uh, what you can say, MNC job, I would have got 6 lakh rupees, right? So, I forsaken, I, I for, I, what you can say, I left that job. So what happened in effect that 6 lakh rupees I am not earning anymore. So that becomes my opportunity cost or that implicit cost. Okay, wages for gone was 6 lakh rupees. So now over here when you taught, calculate the total expense, you, uh, you calculate or you add your explicit expense and your implicit expense. And the, your total expense therefore becomes 12 lakh 50,000. Now when you consider your revenue, it is actually 2 lakh 50,000 rupees less than your total expense. Why? Because you also considered your implicit cost or the opportunity cost. You let go of that salary which you are getting. So now, when you talk about, when you look at the accounting profit, you think that Satvik Suites was a good decision. But when you look at the economic profit, um, your opinions might change, right? But definitely, whether or not to continue with Satvik Suites or wind it up and go find another MNC to work for, depends upon the uh, owner's attitude right so that is how we calculate the accounting profit and economic profit you can take some simple example like this and quote it in your examination paper okay so another important aspect uh, as we said this opportunity cost right this opportunity cost is not something new to us we have been hearing about it since our accounting for managers days right from our first semester onwards we have been hearing about opportunity cost. So I hope that if a question like this uh, comes, what is opportunity cost? Explain with the help of an example why assumption of constant opportunity cost is very unrealistic. Okay, this question was in your assignment. 
of 2023 you will definitely be able to answer it right so i would always suggest you to also learn your assignment question answers while you go for writing your examination because they have also come so why exactly do you think assumption of a constant opportunity cost is very unrealistic i want you guys to wrote, write in the comment section below and share your insights with us okay so that was it for this video uh, there are some more questions in unit 2 that I will deal with in another um, video, okay? So, I have not yet uploaded these notes or this uh, slide deck anywhere. I will see if I can upload them if I get the time. And in case I do upload, I will leave a link to it. Either I will pin, the uh, pin it in the comment section from where you can download it or I will put it in the description box, okay? So, because of the time constraints, uh, I may or may not be able to... Um, but if I, in case I get the time and I upload it anywhere, I will definitely inform you through either the description or the pinned comments. Okay. So all the very best and until I see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.